Dr. Kiza Besige letting us know that the measures that were put in place to curtail the spread of COVID-19 aren't going away anytime soon and will have to leave with the same measures. He also says the government has to come up with a concrete plan. Now, speaking of concrete plans to revive businesses, one of the businesses that has seen growth in its opportunities during the COVID-19 pandemic is digital payments. Today, we speak to Luke Chohere. He's the CEO of Bionic Digital Payment uh, uh, proce uh, processor right there just to put to point this out mr chohere is still stuck in washington dc but he joins me right now via zoom right there how are you mr chohere how are you holding up in washington dc first of all before we get into the conversation with bionic would like to know how you're faring right now now that you're stuck in washington dc and you cannot come back home how is life life's good i'm doing well um we I've got a team in both places, so work's going on as usual. Uh, my family's here as well, so it's not like I'm away from family. So we're doing okay. Thank you. Mr. Luke, how has COVID-19 impacted your business? And so Bionic is a payment processor like you've heard, and our goal is to make payments easier. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, Digital payments have increased during this period, as you well know. Um, that's positive because it's created a conversation where companies that might have been resisting moving to payments before are, are now thinking about how to make payments without handing over cash. Mm. And we've been part of that conversation. Apart from that, you know, the usual masks and lockdown, uh, you know, every day is bring your child to, to work day. So um, we've got employees who are trying to now figure out how to work with kids. Mm -hmm. in the next room mm -hmm. but at least people are not really late for meetings anymore mm -hmm. um as as a company itself one of the negative things though has been that things like getting government permits in some of the places that we work have taken longer you know, yeah. and those are things that we expect to happen for a while where it's going to be slower to get certain things up and running mm -hmm. Some of the things we've done as a company to be part of the conversation is to lower the barrier for payments mm. for companies that need it, need it the most. So mm. we've, we've removed fees for payments in all the markets that we work mm. with, and uh, we've, they're going to be free for a while. They've been free for about two months, and we've seen companies taking advantage of that because mm. we think that uh, digital payments are going to be important. We want to lower the barriers for people to make those payments mm. happen now. Internally, about, with our own staff, yeah. we are supporting employees and families. We've not had to lay off anyone, mm. which is good. That's good um, we moved to a biweekly payment schedule mm. to allow people to make payments, to receive payments more regularly during this period. We've even teamed up with a, a partner to provide counseling and things like that, and mm. also providing facilities for people to work from home. Mm. So that's what Bionic's done as a company, and that's how we're being affected so Indeed. far. So look, let's talk about financial inclusion for a second. What are you doing as a business to promote financial inclusion? Sounds good. Our, our goal is, as I said, to make digital payments easier, full stop. We want to help businesses that are trying to make the move to digital payments to make it easier. Mm. Um, we serve... 50 mobile payment networks and banks across uh, seven countries. And we provide this access to businesses that want to make payments on the, uh, to those networks or through those networks. Um, on top of that, we've built a set of tools that make it easier for a company to take advantage of that access. Things like security, workflow controls, compliance, registration, uh, connection to their enterprise systems. Um, we ask ourselves, what does a business need to do to make the leap to digital payments and how can we help them not have to think about those things. Mm -hmm. We've recently taken control of a, a tool called the IPN Hub that was previously built by the GSMA, it's a consortium of telecommunication companies yes. around the world. Mm -hmm. And this tool is focused on solar companies and uh, utility companies that are trying to electrify rural areas. Mm. Um, and that tool, again, that enables these companies to make and receive payments from these communities mm -hmm. would help with financial inclusion. Another so good one. Look, areas. Another good question for you, Luke. Um, what are some of the best practices that you that you would like to give uh, other innovators in the digital payment space? Best practices. And so, digital payment innovators right now are 
pioneers for all intents and purposes. And it's they're more important now than ever before because mm. it's it's a essential service, as yeah. I would say. Uh, so you've got to be passionate. You've got to have passion for the people you're serving, as well as the technology you're building for your own staff, and to stay the course. The last thing I'd say is perhaps help each other. With mm -hmm. let's set up programs that allow companies that we've got a program that where we have office hours so mm -hmm. our companies can book time with me and other executives and speak about things like this. Um, things like that would help the community. We're happy to be part of the conversation. Yes, uh, look, let's talk about value addition. What unique value are you giving back to your customers uh, to help them, you know, build their businesses? I'm talking about the micro, small and medium-sized enterprises. Mm -hmm. um, so we see Bionic as a toolbox. So on top of just the access mm -hmm. to payment networks and payment rails in a bunch of different places, we've focused on building tools that make it easier for people to take advantage of that access. So you don't have to spend a lot of money up front. You don't have to have a big budget. You don't even have to necessarily be technical to build in systems that allow you to take advantage of payments. Mm -hmm. We're happy to talk to people about how they can take use of those tools. And that's where we think we add the most value. It's, you know, the rails and the access is important, but if you can't take advantage of it, then it might not be as useful as you'd like. Luke Chohere, thank you very much for your time. <laughs> thank you, Ronnie. Yes, uh, Luke Chohere is the CEO of Bionic. It's a, a digital payment processor and he's been telling us a few of uh, the ideas that he has been embarking on to ensure that uh, he, you know, he stays in the game and is not actually blown up by the COVID-19 pandemic. You're still watching NTV at 1. We are going to take a very short break. We'll be right back.